I picked up this part the other day on eBay for like four dollars or something and it just said solid state right cash from IBM now I figure this is from a RAID controller or something but the thing is they said it was a PCM CIA card so I picked it up and I went oh what the hell for a few bucks I can use a little adapter plug it into the computer and take a look at it you know maybe it's a couple megs of uh, high-speed memory maybe it's an, an early uh, SSD type system now, I got it, and it says this part may contain customer data. So, it's obviously retaining something. Now, what a write cache is, is, well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It caches writes. So, uh, basically, on, say, a RAID controller, where you have a big buffer memory uh, to cache the writes to speed it up, because the drives are slow. So, you want to dump it into memory really quickly so you can complete the write and wait for the drives to catch up. Now, the catch is with something like this is if the power goes out, you lose everything that hasn't been written to the physical drives yet because this memory is volatile and just disappears when you lose the power. So, when I got this, I noticed it contains a lithium battery. So, this is battery backed up and it's probably from a RAID controller. Now, I also noticed that this isn't PCMCIA, despite the fact that they said it is. I don't know how well you can see that, but the pins are staggered on this one. They're a normal grid on this one. So, this is a standard card. This is who the hell knows. So, uh, yeah, I can't read what's on it, and there's a little push pin, so it was obviously meant to attach to something. You just clip it in. And it looks like a Type 3 PCM CIA card, but yeah, it's clearly not mechanically. So let's open this up. I was just going to make a video of this after I got it, but since I know this is going to be one way, I kind of have no choice but to shoot the video despite the fact I'm uh, coming off cold. So this just has a little thin metal plate with some capped on tape and see if we can pop this out this looks like SRAM oh I see some batteries this seems to be glued in or something Four lithium cells and a whole bunch of memory underneath it. Uh, give me a minute, I'm going to chop off all the lithium cells so I can get a better look at all the chips. I snipped off all the batteries. They're all the same. They're these nice lithium BR2335s. Now, 2335s are quite a bit bigger than the uh, 2032s that most people are used to seeing. They're in, um, BIOS batteries and stuff on computers, that sort of thing. You can see where these were spot welded. But, uh, yeah, they're quite a bit bigger. And you know that because the number is larger. The number denotes the size of the battery on these guys. So, uh, yeah, bigger number, bigger battery. And, uh, yeah, these are all Railvac. Or the four of them. And they're all good. Which is kind of funny, you know. I wonder how old this thing is. 1995. So, <laughs> these batteries are still registering 3 volts under load, because this was I, I tested them when they were still hooked up to this thing, <laughs> after 20 years. So, yeah. And it does not look like these were replaced. These look like they're original. But, moving on to the board, these are all Sony memory chips. They're all... Uh, they're just regular uh, memory. They're 70 nanosecond, uh, 512K, so there's 6 megs of memory here. And uh, that's pretty much the only thing on it, aside from these two interesting chips. This is a Dallas DS1211S, 
And what this does is this is a controller designed to convert uh, regular CMOS memory into non-volatile memory, which is exactly what they're doing here. They're turning this into memory that does not get erased when it's powered down. And what this chip does is it monitors the power, and I assume with the help of these caps and uh, you know the backup batteries, it basically monitors the incoming power and switches to the battery backup whenever the power goes out. It does this very quickly, and it seems to be a very interesting chip. Like you can uh, work on uh, several memory chips at once. I believe up to eight, and uh, yeah, it's just it's very cool that they made this specially uh, special purpose chip designed for just switching memory back and forth um, to basically f um, treat it as non-volatile. When it detects the power is low, it not only switches to the battery, but it also cuts off all the enable pins so that uh, you can't try and write to them. And it also has this companion chip, which is the uh, Dallas DS. 1336S and this is uh, known as the afterburner chip and it goes along with the first one and what this does is it does the switching for the power it goes along with the aforementioned um, monitoring chip and this is what actually does all the power switching this is just sending signals to this guy and yeah it's, it is specifically designed to switch memory over to a, um, a battery backup when needed and it receives that information from the other chip and they even have like a whole chart of uh, compatible chips and like what you should be using to drive this thing and uh, yeah they just go together and they switch over this memory it's, uh, it's very very interesting that they've got these two uh, just special purpose made chips designed to do nothing but um, switch over the memory. I should say that these are SRAM not DRAM so they are quite uh, fast for the time. I mean 70 nanoseconds is, is pretty good. They also came in an 85 nanosecond uh, variety probably a slower one too but uh, yeah these are uh, fairly decently fast and uh, yeah SRAM uh, is fairly low power uh, I know Apple uses them on, or sorry, I should say used it uh, back in the day for the Newtons. Their memory cards, which were actually PCM CIA, would uh, have a small uh, watch battery in them like this. And, I mean, these are obviously aren't watch batteries, but you know what I mean. A small lithium battery. And uh, it would keep the SRAM chips alive. And now they only had like a megabyte of memory, but they were way faster than the flash memory chips that came out later, which although they didn't need power, they, they were way slower, like an order of magnitude slower compared to the SRAM. But yeah, kind of interesting. Uh, not sure if it was worth my like six bucks, but you know, it's kind of neat to see it. I was kind of hoping it would be... Uh, Something we could have played around with or showed up where it would show up as a drive because you know I couldn't find any information on this thing. It just has a little serial number on the side and another serial number. This top is uh, it's like it's just thick plastic and you can see it's even got little uh, cut out or uh, moldings for the batteries. Oh, isn't it cute? Yeah, kind of neat.